there has been months of planning that has gone into this project from design to engineering to fabrication and it all comes down to this one big pick, this one big day. What I'm holding is a trunnel, or sometimes called a tree nail, uh, used to uh, hold uh, the timbers in, in place, uh, so wood on wood, instead of uh, any sort of steel. And uh, this represents uh, one of those uh, pieces that will uh, turn over to the archives of the National Society for the Preservation of Covered Bridges. But to see a new bridge being moved into position is a great thrill. So we're pleased to join the community on this day. We're in Ellington, Connecticut, and you can see the barnyard right behind me here. We have a brand new timber frame covered bridge that's gonna span this Belding Brook 56 feet across the stream to allow access to this new property. Building a covered bridge project is complex. It involves a lot of different things from design to engineering to working in environments around the stream and making sure everything goes as planned. I'm Joe Fratelli and I'm the uh, design manager and structural engineer for the barnyard and Great Country Timber Frames. Today I'm working on the covered bridge we're doing in Ellington and this is a 56 foot span bridge, um, covered bridge, traditional design. This is very traditional for New England and uh, the type of architectural and design that you really see on these bridges that are still in use today. We have two massive concrete abutments to put in place and right now we're starting to dig out the first abutment on the south side of the bridge. The bridge will pass right between these two timber frame carriage barns across the Belding Brook. You can see we have a temporary pipe here diverting the water in the stream to keep it flowing for the duration of the construction project. The bridge abutments are gonna take us about two weeks to complete. We have to pour footings, then the concrete walls, and get it all ready for the bridge timber frame to sit on top of. Jim Gailey from Earth Dynamics. Uh, really honored to be a part of this project. Really excited to see it all done. I think it's gonna be one of the best bridges in New England. Uh, we got that mark there, we got this pump. So Today is another big day for the bridge project. We've completed the excavation for all the footings, and today is the day we have the concrete getting poured inside the foundations. Right now we're pouring these massive footings for these bridge foundations. You can see the amount of rebar in these footings. This concrete pad is 21 and a half feet wide by 14 feet deep. They're massive footings. We're bringing in a giant pump truck to pump the concrete across the stream to get the abutments poured on the other side. There's also a lot of water you gotta deal with. We have pumps running continuously to keep the water from filling up the holes and even from keeping the stream from coming into the footings. But we are lucky, today is a beautiful February day, 55 degrees and the sun is shining. Could not ask for a better day to do this concrete work. I'm here down in the trench with the concrete team and they're working away, pumping the concrete into these massive footings. These footings are 14 inches thick. It takes two concrete trucks just to fill up one of these footings. It's unbelievable. You can see the amount of rebar and reinforcement that goes into this. And we've got the best guys here making this all happen. The next step will be to pour the concrete walls and then the floor and the ramps coming up to it. We'll have the pump truck here two more days completing those last steps, then the concrete will be complete and we're ready for the timber bridge construction to begin. Right. 
It's day two of the covered bridge concrete pour. We now have all of the foundation walls in place. The concrete crew has been here in the past two days, formed up all the walls that are gonna make the abutments for this covered bridge project. These walls right here we're looking at, these are gonna be the walls, the retaining walls leading up to the bridge. The concrete is gonna be on an angle. So this will be a challenge getting this formed up and poured to the slope of the wall of the ramp. You can see the extensive formwork and the amount of work that goes into just preparing for the foundation for this bridge. It's going to be incredible. As you can see, the stream meanders and has really eroded the banks over the years. This project also includes remediation for the stream. Part of our plan is to actually straighten the stream and widen the channels, make it a little deeper to provide a nice stream bed under the bridge. I'm Zach Luganbill. I serve as the production manager here at Great Country Timber Frames. Today I will be taking you through our shop facility where we are currently manufacturing the Barnyard Bridge. The bridge consists of over 16,000 board feet of timber and that's a variety between oak and Douglas fir. There's over 400 parts to this build and each piece is being cut on the CNC machine as you can see behind me. It's a five axis machine so it can cut the timber on all five sides. The machine is equipped with an automatic tool changer and it automatically grabs the correct tool for the specific process it's about to do. As the piece is ejected from the machine, the operator will do a visual inspection on the piece to ensure that everything is precisely cut. He will then number the piece and that number will correspond with the production drawings that the men out in the field will use for the assembly process. Over here to my right, we have all the truss components. These trusses will be pre-assembled here at our shop and then we will truck them to the site and then assemble the bridge. And I cannot wait to see how these things fit. It's an exciting day. Today we are assembling the two town lattice trusses for the covered bridge project. These trusses are the backbone of the covered bridge. They do all the work carrying the floor load for the vehicles and the roof load for the snow. This truss is basically a big sandwich of members. You have the, the cords on the top and bottom. In the middle, you have these lattice members which gets crisscrossed. And the top is the last layer of blue lambs that we create the sandwich to create this very strong bridge truss. So these trusses, as you can see, we've started to lay up all these lattice members together. Very intricate. You can see how we all the lattice members interlock with each other, creating a really rigid frame for this bridge. These trusses are 56 feet long, and the height of these is 15 feet tall. This is a big assembly we're making here. There's going to be two of these, one for each side of the bridge. This town trust design was patented in 1820 by Ithiel Town, an architect out of New Haven, Connecticut. And they're really popular because of the simplicity of these trusses. They could be built at most any length just by adding more lattice members and making the truss longer. We're going to great lengths to ensure this stays a traditional New England covered bridge. All of the connections are going to be only held together with peg connections. We're putting a few screws in just to hold it temporarily for construction, but this bridge will be all connected with these monster inch and a half oak pegs. These pegs are almost the size of a baseball bat. It's insane. We have these nice drilling templates set up and we're going to drill through and make one clean pass through for the inch and a half oak pegs. So you can see the pegs and the drillings we're starting to put into place. And there's going to be about 800 of these pegs holding the bridge together at all different locations. 
As the lattice members start getting put into place, you'll notice the diamond pattern it creates. This bridge will have four diamond windows, which will be a really neat feature for this covered bridge project. The first town lattice bridge truss is well underway. After this, we have one more to build, and then we're going to transport these monster trusses to the bridge site. It's going to be a wide load, and we're going to take these trusses and assemble the whole bridge on site at the location in Ellington. My name's Don Rogers. Uh, everybody calls me Ricochet. I'm here picking up the bridge for the barnyard, take it over to their new lot. Well, today's the day we're taking these trusses and delivering them to the bridge site. Each one of these bridge trusses weighs 13,000 pounds. The trick right now is picking this up flat and then driving this big semi-tractor trailer rig underneath to get them flat on the trailer. These trusses are massive. We just loaded the first one onto the trailer, precisely picking them up with the forklifts. We have one down and one more truss to load onto this big tractor trailer. We now have these trusses all loaded up and we're ready to move to the bridge site, which is only about a mile away. These are a very wide load. These are nearly 16 feet going down the road. We have two police escorts to escort us to the bridge site. We are ready to get this bridge built. Woohoo! Well, that was an exciting ride, but the bridge trusses made it to the site one mile down the road. So now we are going to pre-assemble this bridge off to the side, high and dry on these four concrete blocks. We're gonna assemble the two trusses, the floor system, and the roof ties, and build this whole box right here on the ground. And in a couple days, we'll have a big 260 ton crane lift the whole unit as one big piece onto the abutments that we're standing on now. It's gonna be awesome. Good morning, Martin Clark, King Clark Crane Service. Today we're standing up both sides of the bridge walls with a 36 and a 33 ton crane from King Clark. They're weighing in at 12,900 pounds and we expect the total of the bridge to weigh somewhere in the vicinity of 45,000 pounds. installing now are actually the bearing pads that will sit on the concrete abutments. These are made of white oak, a really natural, durable wood species. These are also called bolster beams. You can see they're about six feet long and they'll spread out the weight of the trusses throughout the two beams. We have the one truss standing in place and right now we're pre-setting all of the floor joists for the bridge into position. The floor joists are here and we're shifting them all to one side. That way the next step is to set the last truss over here and then the floor joists will come back into place. We'll have the floor system all set up.
making really great progress. We have both of the trusses now standing in place and all of the floor joists locked. The last step for the day to get things yep. ready is to start putting the top roof bracing pieces on. We're gonna start putting the cross braces that are locked in the top of these trusses and there's X bracing that runs down the whole bridge to make it secure. Getting close with the bridge assembly and the wind has picked up, it is windy. We have a few more lateral cross braces to set on top of this bridge structure and it will be totally locked in and ready for the big raising day tomorrow. We are so excited. Well, that's a wrap on the assembly day of the barnyard covered bridge. It was quite a day. And look at this amazing bridge. This is one of the few times we'll get to see this timber frame bridge with no siding against the blue sky. It's going to be absolutely amazing. The lattice work and the timbers and the oak pegs and these big glue lamb beams are incredible. The design of this bridge is so intricate. As you look down from the top, you can see all the diagonals and the crisscrosses that are gonna be the bracing for the floor system and the roof of this bridge. The size of the timbers are also impressive. These floor joists are massive, 10 by 14 floor joists, heavy enough for vehicle loading. Now that the bridge assembly is all complete, we're looking forward to the big day tomorrow and we take this whole bridge with a big massive crane and lift this whole thing in one pick over the river onto the concrete abutments behind me. It is going to be unbelievable. The big day has arrived for the monumental barnyard covered bridge project. This raising is the talk of Ellington. We have a huge crowd coming today to watch the raising. We're expecting over 200 people to show up to watch this historic moment in the town of Ellington. We have the 275 ton crane hooked up behind me, ready to lift this enormous bridge in place. This is only one of 800 bridges, covered bridges in the world. We're adding another one today, quite an historic moment. So today we're gonna be picking 41,000 pounds of lumber and uh, we rigged it in eight places with roller blocks so it picks it evenly. Every one of the rigs is picking the same amount of weight due to the fact that the cables can pivot back and forth. So all four ropes are going to counteract each other, but you still want to be able to steer that thing if you have to. So we're going to have two guys on a rope, four ropes out, two to get thrown across, and we're, this thing's going to go just the way we planned it. So let's do it. All right, fellas, let's hit it. Exciting day today here in Ellington, Connecticut as a, a covered bridge, a new covered bridge uh, has just been moved onto its abutments uh, at the barnyard. Uh, and the barnyard bridge uh, 
uh, built, designed and built in the style of uh, the historic covered bridges of uh, the Northeast. Wow, that was an unbelievable crane pick. We only had a half inch on either side of these abutments to set down this bridge and it went absolutely perfect. The bridge swung in nice and easy and we had a huge crowd. The pressure was high to get this right. And our team, the hard work paid off. The bridge is now set in place over the river and is officially a covered bridge. So awesome. We're one step closer to finishing up raising day of the covered bridge. We're gonna fly all of these roof rafters into place, 56 feet, two foot on center, down the whole length of the bridge. And at the end of the day, we'll have a beautiful covered bridge. This bridge is all about the joinery. There's actually more joints in this bridge than there are timbers. Think about that, that is pretty crazy. And we went to great lengths to ensure this was an authentic 1800s era bridge. All peg connections, step lap joinery, mortise and tenon connections, full housings. There is not a detail missed on this barnyard bridge. Well, we just wrapped up the raising of this bridge frame and just topped it out with the evergreen tree. What an awesome day it was. Lots of people from the community stopped by to watch the raising and we have a deep appreciation for how these bridges were built in the past. We're proud to add another covered bridge to Ellington, Connecticut. My name is John Burdick. I'm one of the crew leads here at the barnyard. Uh, today we're working at the covered bridge here in Ellington. So we got here the reclaimed lumber and uh, due to its nature, it protects itself against the elements and so we wrapped it around at least four feet inside right from the rain coming down and so you won't see discoloration onto the timbers here. My name's Chris. Um, today we're putting on reclaimed chestnut. You know, that came off of an old barn. I believe it's a few generations old. Oh, hey there. How you doing? I didn't see you. Well, anyway, my name's Drake and uh, I work for the barnyard and as you can see, working on this beautiful covered bridge here. And so we just finished the roof, putting on the underlayment. Uh, so that's ready to go, metal roofing. And now we're gonna work on some old barn board siding, all authentic, old wood that's been reclaimed. And uh, we'll put that up, and we'll finish cut the bottoms, router out for the windows, to look like an old covered bridge. So, beautiful day here. We're gonna get to work and have some fun. Have a good day. <laughs>